Time is important, so let's talk about it. Today we'll look at process, tact, lead, and cycle time, and why it's imperative we measure these. Tact time is the speed of producing an item matched to the customer demand. How is tact time calculated? Tact time is the total available working time divided by the number of units that a customer demands. Let's look at an example. We have eight hours a day times 60 equals 480 minutes. We'll subtract the 30 minute break and the 60 minutes of downtime. In the end, we have a total of 390 minutes of available work time. Now, we'll divide this by the 10 units demanded and get 39. This tells us that a unit needs to be produced every 39 minutes. It allows you to gauge the speed at which you need to work to satisfy the customer. This keeps you from being too slow and losing customers, as well as avoiding the production of too much inventory or waste. Your tack time should be similar or just over your throughput time. Throughput time measures how long it takes to produce one item, while tack time is how long it should take. How can you improve your tack time? First, map out your value stream and improve the processes. Conduct a 5S initiative. Conduct Heijunka. Increase production volumes. Finally, if your processes are optimized, look at increasing your capacity by hiring new staff, purchasing more equipment, or pulling more Kanban cards. Now let's look at cycle time. Cycle time is a metric that measures how long it takes for an item to move from the in progress column to the done column. Cycle time is calculated by dividing all the work in progress items by their average completion rate. How do you calculate cycle time? We subtract the start date from the completion date with an optional plus one to correct a zero day cycle where a task is completed on the same day. This measurement alone is not that helpful, but we'll need several of these to calculate and predict the average cycle time. Say there are five tasks with these cycle times for each task. We'll add up these weeks and divide them by five to get your average cycle time of 2.2 weeks. Thanks to this information, when a client comes back with a project consisting of 10 tasks and you'll want to forecast the completion time, multiply the average cycle time of 2.2 weeks times 10 to get a 22 weeks total cycle time. That is, assuming your system's throughput equals one unit for the average cycle time. This gives you a reliable way of communicating completion times to the client and enables you to offer them realistic commitments. Here are three ways we can reduce your cycle time. One, limiting work in progress. Two, speed up work by ridding your process of bottlenecks and blockers. Three, classify items on your board into groups or classes of service since there may be variation in different types of work. For example, coding a new software feature will typically have a longer cycle time than fixing a minor bug. This is where a digital Kanban board can be a powerful tool because of its automatic, accurate, and easy tracking of all cycle times, as well as various other statistics. Like this cumulative flow diagram that shows the stability and predictability of work and lets the team calculate and report on cycle times, not only on the overall speed of processing work. What is lead time? The lead time is the time from the moment when the request was made by a client and placed on a board to when all work on this item is completed and the request was delivered to the client. So it's the total time the client is waiting for an item to be delivered and thus is very important. To clarify, cycle time measures the time between when a task is started to when it is finished. Lead time includes the time from when a customer makes a request to the request completion. I hope you enjoyed learning about these useful tools. Follow us to learn more about tact lead and cycle times.